Hi, friends. This episode of Big Blue Banter is brought to you by Prize Picks. Head on over to Prize Picks and use promo code BANTER, and they'll match up to $100 on a new deposit. Thank you and enjoy. Welcome back. It's the Big Blue Banter New York Giants football podcast. I'm Dan Schneier. Joining us always my co host, Nick Villato. We're going to do a quick primer on some defensive free agents to keep an eye on as we hit the, fi- the the final days before the legal tampering window. Obviously, the new league year is next week and the midweek, but that window opens up on Monday. So we're going to start to get news on Sunday and Monday, and we'll keep it locked and loaded, and we'll cover it as it goes as the Giants sign players on the defense side of the ball or have interest. So these are just kind of a little bit of a primer to get you going there uh, and keep some names in mind. So let's start with the most important position, I think, right now as it pertains to the Giants uh, in free agency. Well, there's two. So I'll start with the second most. And let's start with safety. Because safety is the interesting one with Xavier McKinney of the Giants hitting free agency. I think he went on Up and Adams show today with Kay Adams, Nick, today and said, you know, I want to stay with the Giants, but it's kind of out of my control right now. And I think, you know, that's player speak for my agent was asking for a top of the market value. And the Giants said, no, test the market, come back to us. And that's kind of what happens. And so... That is out of the Giants' control right now. But there's a lot of safeties on the market right now, dude. It's kind of crazy. Justin Simmons was cut. Now he's on the market. Kevin Byard has experience playing in Shane Bowen's system. He's going to come cheap if the Giants want him. Cam Curl is a guy whose tape we loved when he played against the Giants. He's on the market. Condre Diggs has been like a solid safety for a while. He's on the market. Even like lower guys like Jaron Curse, Kyle Duggar. These are guys that usually wouldn't be on the market. I even like like Julian Blackman cheap that's a guy that i pinpointed when i saw he was hitting free and i think he'd be kind of an interesting fit and then just players who at one point were like really ascending and have just fallen jeremy chin for example i remember his film as a rookie people were like raving about it now he's like bottom of the market safety type player because he fell out of favor in that uh, panthers defensive system last year and just didn't find a role and now he's gonna have to try to new find a new role in the market and then micah hyde who has connections obviously to the joe shane um, 10 years. So there's just a lot of names right there. And that doesn't even cover them all. That's just the ones I went over. Um, that's a, that's a bunch right there. What are your thoughts on how the giants are going to approach the safety position, Nick Jordan Poyer too? another guy, oh, Poyer, another guy with connection. Shane. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I'm uncertain how they're going to handle this. I think Joe Shane is going to be pragmatic about the situation. That's what I want from my general manager. I don't want my general manager to overpay just because he wants to retain the talents of Xavier McKinney. Look, Xavier McKinney, if you and your agent want to reset the safety market, or if you want to get like 16 million a year, I would rather maybe pursue a Cameron Curl, who's 24 years old as well, who is a very talented safety. If you can get him at nine and a half, but I, I think Curl will probably earn a little bit more than that. But again, to your point and to the point that we've been discussing off air, there are so many damn safeties. And the value of safety is going to be low regardless. I think Diana Rossini of ESPN just tweeted something about that as like, dude, the safeties always go for cheaper, right? And then we've seen seamless transitions from safeties who entered free agency and then signed with another team. And then they go to their other team and it's not like they're busting. Like how many safety, how many safeties that signed with the new team of free agency ended up busting? It doesn't seem like that, that, that the hit rate is high, right? Right. Like you got like Marcus Williams going from the Saints to the Baltimore Ravens. He ends up playing really well. I mean, if you want to go back in Giants history, you had Entral Roll from the Cardinals to the New York Giants ended up playing really well. So the safety from a free agent standpoint typically translates and, and it's not like a, a, bu- a high bust rate, but it's still a depreciated position from the market standpoint. So I am so interested to see who is going to be the the the, the top dog. I think it's going to be, have to be Justin Simmons, right? Like Justin Simmons to me yes. is probably the best safety that is out there. I think a player like Kevin Byard, and Quandre Diggs, who are both a little bit longer in the tooth, could be very available for the Giants. And I think the Giants should have interest, even if this is a quote-unquote throwaway year, I think you should have interest in bringing in a young safety. Because as much as I love Xavier McKinney, Xavier McKinney was a young player. You have Jason Pinnock, you have Dane Belton, you have Javarius Owens, you have a lot of youth in the back end. You have Deontay Banks, you have Cordell Flott, a lot of youth in the secondary under the tutelage of Jerome Henderson. Don't you want maybe a veteran leader who's been around the league, who has been successful, all pro type talents? That's Quandre Diggs and that's Kevin Byard. And we know Kevin Byard has the experience in Shane Bowen's system. So you could probably get these guys at a fraction of what you're going to be able to get Xavier McKinney at. I would not mind a two-year deal to bring one of those two players in to kind of teach and and be the leader right, to set the right. example for these young guys. Because right now, I think the oldest safety on the New York Giants with Xavier McKinney not there is Jason Pinnock, and he's 24. So mm-hmm. let's put that in perspective. I think you nailed it. I think you nailed this one completely, Nick. To me, and this is crazy to say because 
I don't know if I originally felt this way with Xavier McKinney, but it, it, it also depends. Like, are the Giants going to be willing to invest in edge or guard? If they're not going to spend the money they were going to spend on McKinney in, at edge or guard for a young edge or guard, then I'm not for this. But if they are going to spend that money and they view it as only having certain cap dollars to allocate, I'm more open than I was to letting McKinney walk if you're going to allocate that toward an Unwenu or one of these types of edge that we're going to go over today. Because I'll be honest with you, there are options outside of paying safety in the NFL. And there's a really good article today from Jonathan Jones from CBS Sports, one of the insiders we have going for us, that really is very eye-opening. And he's basically saying, like, the NFL's making it clear in what they've done with these re with these releases and, and with the paying the market that safeties are not worth the money. And the reason they're viewing it as such a big change and why their opinion has changed so much in recent years is the trends in the NFL, which is essentially that teams are not throwing deep quarterback. It's a combination of what we've talked about in this podcast for years, Nick, the quarterbacks aren't processing it well enough anymore. The arm talent, maybe not there. It's a combination of all the factors, but offenses are not really throwing deep. And obviously it's the way that deep teams are playing. They're playing a lot of two high looks and cover three and cover six. And it's like, there's a lot of safeties back there and they're keeping everything underneath and in front of them. But the way these schemes are going, like, if you're not going to get a three downs, a three way safety, a guy who can play in the box, he can match up in the slot and play on the and, and play in the deep half, which by the way, McKinney kind of is. So that's the only thing. But if you're not going to get a three way safety, but he's not really, you know, he hasn't done it at a at a consistent level at the highest of levels. And I think Giants fans would say that to you, Nick, or say that to us. What's going on, Big Blue Banter listeners? I'm excited for the football season for several reasons. And one of those reasons is Prize Picks, which is North America's largest independently owned daily fantasy sports platform. And it's so simple to use. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including professionals, sharks, and people who are going to exploit you, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections, and you just watch the winnings roll in. It's very simple to play and gives you a little extra skin. I've set my picks in less than 60 seconds. There are so many stats to choose from, and the withdrawals of funds are easy and quick. Dan and I will be adding a segment to our show before every game where we pick our favorite stats, more or less yards or touchdowns, what have you, and we'll be discussing why from a scheme, matchup, and game theory perspective. I love their promotions and how easy their interface is to operate at prize picks. I may select more on tackles for a loss from Bobby Okereke or Kayvon Thibodeau next game. They also do other sports as well. It's a really cool experience. Please join Dan and I in the fun of prize picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash banter and use code banter for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, go to prizepicks.com slash banter and use code banter for a first deposit match up to $100. You will not regret it. Oh, my friends, you know what time it is. You're hungry, you're starving, and you desperately need pizza. You should get the best pizza on the market. And that is, of course, Little Caesars. Make Little Caesars the official pizza sponsor of the NFL, part of your game day. Order online during the Pizza Pizza pregame all day on NFL game days and even on Pro Bowl Sunday and get ready for some football fun and cheesy delicious pizza. Choose your favorite Little Caesars pizza or pick the toppings you crave. Either way, you win. And speaking of winning, everyone scores with convenient delivery or our in-store pizza portal pickup. So grab some friends and enjoy a few slices during the game. But if you're not going to get that, why are you paying for a position that isn't really a part of every play at times? Especially if you're talking about deep half safeties. I mean, some of these trends are are, are crazy. I, over the against too high last year, for example, quarterback, quarterbacks threw 68 percent of their passes less than 10 yards downfield, and that number was 63 percent against one high looks. But again, a lot of teams are going to two high looks. Here's another thing. And what's going to last be the four years? What, Go ahead. What's going to be the natural reaction to that? You see a lot more teams running the football. Oh, uh, yeah, exactly. It's going to lead to maybe higher market value for interior offensive linemen. But for some right. reason, and I think we know why, not the running back. <laughs> right, 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 right. But that's, yes, exactly. But over the last four years, the league has seen uh, less than eight passes per game of 20 plus yards down the field attempted. And after a decade of that being over eight per game every single year, 
That's crazy stuff right there. And then last year, there were just 15.4 passes per game. Or last year, sorry, there were 15.4 passes per game behind the line of scrimmage. That's the most there's been since the NFL began tracking it. And of, of the past two decades, last five years have produced the lowest interception rates in the NFL because people are not throwing it deep. They're not throwing it 20 plus. And these are all stats courtesy of Jonathan Jones of uh, CBS Sports. But it's an interesting thing to consider, like, should the Giants be one of these teams that invest big salary cap space in the safety position, even though you don't want to let a homegrown talent go, you and I both feel there's untapped potential with him in the post, but like how often is he going to get to utilize his skill set if teams are just not throwing it deep? And that's kind of something to consider. It's something to consider, but you are always playing to beat the teams that are in your division and both the Cowboys and the Eagles throw deep on the Giants. So safety yeah. position from that standpoint, and now we have a different defensive coordinator. We didn't have a defensive coordinator for the past two years that played too high all that often. Now we're going to have a defensive coordinator that runs a lot of quarters, a lot of two read coverage, meaning you're going to need to have a adaptive type of safety who can, who can read the release of the number two receiver and then react based on the other routes. You need a smart safety. Kevin Byard has done that a lot of yeah. safeties do pattern match is not something that's like, Hey, I run a pattern match that like pattern match is something that like most teams do right within their defense is some more than others. And that's something that Shane Bowen definitely did. And you're going to see a lot of kind of four high shells or, or two high yep. shells, I should say, but cover four quarters, palms type of looks, but you need a smart safety and the giants right now, I'm not saying they don't have smart safeties, but they have relatively inexperienced safety room. Yep. And yep. Eddie Jackson, I mean, there's a lot of guys. I wouldn't be surprised if it's either of those bills either whether it's Poyer right. or Micah Hyde coming in. Yeah, and I love the idea of, of it being one of those guys, or I love the idea of it being Kevin Byard, because like you said, he knows the system inside out with Shane Bowen. He can come in and he can, and that's the thing. We have young talent at the safety position. We like what we saw from Jason Pinnock on tape last year. Were there moments where he, he could have done a better job tackling in space? Sure. But there were also some really good flashes of him at every level. In the deep half, he had some really good flashes. Or near the line of scrimmage, he had some really good flashes. And then the same goes for Dane Belton, a player who I thought might be a sleeper last year. He ended up not being one. I don't think he ever really kind of ingratiating himself with Wink Martindale, but now he's got a new coach and it's a coach that likes to play three, high, three safeties in the mix. And it means that the giants are going to be interested in the position, but also it means that, you know, you bring a guy like Kevin Byard in here, he can help, like you said, develop these players and kind of get them. I would say up to speed faster with the system as they're making that change. And there's also where, and there's also a few other players I wanted to bring up or one specific player I want to bring up because I felt Nick and obviously Adoree Jackson is now hitting the free agent market and unlikely to resign with Giants. I felt like they really haven't had a good solution in the slot for a while. A player that intrigues me is Julian Blackman from the Colts because he played corner in college and he's had 350 snaps in the slot since the 2022 season. And he's someone you could bring in. Yeah, he plays a lot of safety, but he's someone you can bring in and he could play some slot for you. He could play safety. He can kind of mix in a little bit with the different things that, um, that, uh, that, that, Shane Bowen's going to bring to the safety position. I remember watching him when he was at Utah. Me too. He was, yeah, solid player. I like to stay at Utah a lot. There was, there was another safety, another very rangy safety that was playing with him, and I can't remember. With him at right Utah. Now. Who was that? It was Blackman. Uh, who was the other dude? Uh, there were two of them. Regardless, yeah, Julian Blackman is a name. I, I'm imagining, though, with that versatility, whoever his agent is probably going to try to like get a little bit more than maybe just like a typical safety type of contract at 25 years old. So that would be interesting to monitor, but I, I like, I like bringing up a young safety's name outside exactly. of just Cameron curl. Yeah. There's not that many young safety and Cameron curl is going to get a big deal. Like Julian Blackman, you can hopefully get cheaper, um, but who yeah, knows? That's, not, so. that's no guarantee. All right. Let's talk a little bit of the edges here. Um, we talked a little bit about the Nell Hunter on the last podcast. I don't think we need to go back into it. You've, you no. broke down his pressures. I also don't think the Giants are signing him. But one that I think that if the Giants are going to make a splash in free agency, like let's say they don't sign McKinney and they allocate that cap space elsewhere and they want it to go to a young player in free agency. One guy that comes to mind, dude, especially with Shane Bowen in here and wide nine. And this is a guy who people who watch the tape of this team say they freaking love this guy. And he is a star in the making, just played on a deep depth chart. It's Bryce Huff from I'm the Jets. Bryce Huff, yeah. yeah. People freaking yeah. love Bryce Huff. And they think he has insane pass rush upside. And once again, just like he did in 2022, his pass rush win rate was through the roof. Just unbelievably dominant. Now, does it help that he doesn't play every snap? Yes. Does it help that he is in on pass down snaps, like in specific role? Yeah, it's going to help your you in these rate statistics for sure. But people who watch his tape love him. And... Maybe he is ultimately just a guy who is a system fit or just, you don't you can't really fully trust him to play 
hundred percent of the snaps. He's more of a pass rusher only or passing downs um, specific type player, maybe, but there's also the potential you're getting a really budding star pass rusher. Who's going to get you, you know, what, what you just said from uh, Danelle Hunter, 80 to 90 pressures a, a year with 14 to 15 snacks sacks. I don't think that's impossible here. And he's somebody who I'm really intrigued by. Yeah. I have Bryce Huff as one of my top targets. And especially if Joe Shane, look, you can't fix everything this off season, True. but it, he's identified. I, I, <laughs> I don't know if he said it, but we know that edge rusher is a huge part of building a roster, right? We know that he allocated a top five pick into cave on Thibodeau. He inherited a Zizo Jolari. If you just look at that depth chart right now, do you honestly believe the giants aren't going to invest in the edge position, right? Like we could take Pat Leonard's word for it. I think it was Pat Leonard that they're looking at interior offensive line and edge edge makes so much sense. And if you can add a guy like Bryce Huff, he fits Shane Bowen so well. You're right. Cause the wide nineties, 25 years old, this player, he had 67 pressures last year, 36 in the previous year and 14 sacks over the last two seasons. I would love to add this player six foot three, 255 pounds. That is Bryce Huff of the New York jets. I think the jets are going to want to try to retain him though. I don't think the yeah. jets want him to leave. I don't and know if I, they have the cap space to do it though. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. That, that yeah, will definitely be interesting. I have an issue for them. So look, we could talk forever about Danico Autry. If you listen to this podcast, you know Dan and I both are in, interested in Danico Autry. He'll be 34 years old, I believe, in July. Been wildly productive with the Tennessee Titans and Shane Bowen. 275 pounds, kind of like a similar build to Jihad Ward, only he's really good at football uh, still. So Danico Autry is a target of mine, and I really hope the New York Giants sign him. But for time purposes, I, I want to get into another name. A name that has been linked to the Giants in the past. A name that started with the Washington Commanders and then was traded to the San Francisco 49ers, and that is oh. Chase Young. What are your opinions of Chase Young possibly being a New York Giant? Out on this one. I don't I don't like what I've seen from Chase Young at the NFL level, uh, which is crazy to say, but I think it injuries. You watch him this past year? I, it's not, I didn't really watch him much. I just don't like his trajectory, I should say. Like, I don't think he's the type of guy right now where the Giants are going to get cheap or on a bargain deal. I don't know if you feel that way. If that's the case, sure. But I think his name brand alone and his draft stock alone, like just look at what Mitchell Trubisky just got from the Bills. Uh, this is like, I, and I, I, I quote, I think I either quote tweeted or retweeted Eric Eager from, from Pro Football Focus. He's like, look at what draft position can get you. Like people are still paying money, guaranteed money to Mitch Trubisky. And he's like, he literally had, E three level film last year with the Steelers. And I think that's pretty accurate. I thought when I watched Mr. he was the worst quarterback I watched in all of football last year that was actually taking snaps. And I think chase young is going to have a similar thing where his draft billing and his quote unquote upside is going to get him a much bigger contract. So I guess if it's like a one year prove it deal, maybe, or if they somehow can get a bargain, I don't even know if the giants even have any, there's even any value to a one year prove it deal with the stage that they're at in their rebuild. So I'm not so sure where I stand on that one, but I'm I'm not as high in him. He had 74 pressures last year. Like he had a yeah, really he definitely good can pressure team. the quarterback, but against yeah. the run, I mean, I haven't watched him against the run yeah. other than against the New York Giants, and I didn't think he was somebody who was struggling against the run. It's just this is a 24 year old with high pedigree. I think you're right. A team is probably going to be uh, more willing him. to pay yeah. him more than what the Giants might be able to afford. But that's a name that came to my mind. If you are looking to invest into an edge position, look, I don't, I don't know how much you want to give this guy. He's what now a year and a half, two years removed from that yeah. ACL. But the year he just put on tape, from what I've seen and just from the stats, impressive player. I think there's a lot of negative attention around him because he kind of got off to somewhat of a slow start, and then he ended up tearing his ACL. Yep. Um, and then there's also a player that's been linked to the Giants, Jonathan Greenard. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Greenard, Grenard. Grenard, who's more, I guess, of like the set the edge type of player, obviously had a, but had a pretty good season under D'Amico Ryans, who's a great coach. He had a 9.3% run stop rate, which was the eighth best among all edge defenders. Does a really good job to set that edge. Kind of like more of the solid cleanup pass rusher. Any, any thoughts on potentially bringing him in? I think he's just going to be a little bit too expensive, but okay. yeah, he plays in a lot in an even front out there with D'Amico Ryan. So that's a player to monitor. I got one more name for you before we get out of here. And that is DJ Wanham of the Minnesota Vikings. Andre Patterson, when they drafted DJ Wanham, he's like, this is my little, my little new pet. He, he called him. It was something like that. Like they have a tight relationship from their time in Minnesota. And if you watch DJ Wanham, or if you know anything about DJ Wanham, he was selected, I think in the fourth round out of South Carolina. I want to say I was a 2019 draft. It might've been the 2020 draft. Regardless, He's very long. He's tall, a little bit slender, but he can get after the freaking quarterback. 
He can get after the quarterback. And that's something that he did playing opposite of Daniel Hunter. I think he had over 35 pressures in the last two seasons. I'm not saying he's Chase Young or anything like that, but if you're going to get somebody on the cheap and somebody to add depth to your roster, I think Wanham is somebody who's familiar and also competent with an upward trajectory. Yeah, I think there's a few others I want I want to put on fans' radar before we before we jump here. Um, Zarius Zary Smith is an interesting one. He still plays at a high level and just doesn't get the respect he deserves. I don't think he's at at the point of where the Giants are at in the rebuild. I don't think that's going to be a player they're interested in, but just a name to consider. Andrew Van Ginkle from the Dolphins, the former Badger. I mean, this dude is so good on team, so it is what it is. And he was injured last year and got injured toward the end of the year, so that could impact his free agency. I know know we're pressed on time, but I want to ask you this. I know, Did you love Van Ginkle in college, or was I like... Loved Van Ginkle. You did, okay, because I remember early in the podcast, podcast listeners from a while ago, I was like, yo, this Van Ginkle guy is freaking great, dude. Like, Did you like him at Wisconsin? Like, We didn't talk about that or coordinate that before, but yeah, he's definitely a fan. Like, I love every Wisconsin linebacker, for better or worse. And for the most part, it's been for better. Van Ginkle, uh, the dude who was undrafted, Sanborn was undrafted, found a role with the Bears, just incredible value. Obviously, Lou Chanel is now coming out. It's pretty much been a hit across the board except for Zach Bond. That's the only one that missed, and we liked him it was too. Rough. So it's yeah, one it's miss, rough. and the rest are all hits. So it's linebacker you right now for the for the Badgers. Obviously, <laughs> TJ Watt. You can go on with just the ones that are just guaranteed. But, and, and the kid for the Steelers last year who looked awesome. And I don't know why I'm blanking on his name right now. Who We liked his film. Really good film. What's his name? Kid they took in the third round. Um, why am I forgetting this name? I'm Wisconsin last year, the, the, the last linebacker year. from last year, the edge who who people thought had two short arms. Why am oh, I like, oh, Nick Herbig. Yeah, Herbig. Herbig, yeah. who was yeah. phenomenal on tape, yeah. just phenomenal. And then was awesome last year with the Steelers. John downright awesome as a rookie. So it's just it works almost every time. So when I tell you Wisconsin linebacker, believe me. And when I tell you I don't like a Wisconsin player, it probably means we shouldn't like him. And I don't like Braylon Allen the way that he's projected. So just keep that in mind. But a couple of their names I want to just throw out there. Van Ginkle is one of them. Dorrance Armstrong from the Cowboys. I oh, think yeah. there's a little bit of sleeper appeal here because he's played in such a uh, heavy depth chart. Huge, long-ass arms, almost 35-inch arms. Uh, pressure rates above 11% in each of the last three seasons. Obviously, it helps that like he is kind of a situational player. I think that kind of helps your rates. That's always Nick. So just take that with a grain of salt. Um, but definitely he had 36 not. pressures in 2021, 43 in 2022, and then 35 in 2023 right. with 27 career sacks. Like that's, that's pretty solid right there playing in, like you said, a rotational role. Right. Exactly. A couple other guys I want to throw on the radar. Taekwon Lewis from the Colts. The reason I like him just watching a little bit of him. Someone should put me onto him. He's his best snaps are as a wide nine type rusher. And what are we going to get from the Giants? We're going to get a scheme that's going to utilize these wide nine edge rushers. So just an interesting name to keep in mind as a potential situational pass rusher for the Giants. And one more name I want to throw out there is a sleeper who's had a weird career. And obviously the injury, uh, you know, he lost the entire 2023 season to an injury. Um, I, or what did he play? And he only had 118 snaps the year before. So he's had like back-to-back injured years, but this is a player who I know from sources, the giants were really in on when he was a prospect in the draft and they loved him. And that's Marcus Davenport. Oh, okay. Who were you going to say? Leonard Floyd, but I was like, I'm pretty sure no, no, yeah, Leonard years. Floyd's got to be done yeah. in the NFL, but it's Marcus Davenport. And now that's back-to-back injured years. He signed a one year, $10 million flyer last year. I'm intrigued by him on like a flyer type deal, re- rebirth your career with the Giants if they still like him like they did coming out of the draft. So Marcus Davenport, one more player, former first round pick. All right. We were a little pressed on time today. Both Nick and I are doing a bunch of things, but keep it locked and loaded. Sunday, we're going to come back at you with some in, with whatever is in the news with the Giants, any free agent buzz. But these are just kind of primer pods to get you get you going and get the juices flowing for free agency. Have a great rest of your week and we'll talk to you soon.